Hey, and welcome to Community Christian Church and happy Mother's Day. If you are a mom watching this, we just celebrate you. We are so proud of you and just want to encourage you to keep up the good work. Keep up the hard work of being a good mother to your children. If you aren't a mom, but you have a mom, I hope you're spending some cash on her today. Like seriously, she is all about the Benjamins today. Go take her out to dinner, buy her those chocolates, get her a massage, whatever it is, go and spend some cash on your mother today. Speaking of cash, we're going to dive into a four-week teaching series called Money Talks. During this financial series, we are going to learn how to listen to and, and learn from our money so that we can find financial freedom for our lives, for those around us, and ultimately bring glory to God. Wouldn't it be awesome if money could speak to you? Like, what would it say if, if, if you could audibly hear money speaking to you? Would it say, hey, you're doing a really good job with those investments, keep it up. Hey, that spending habit that you have, you should probably change that because you're sending a lot of me away and I want to be close to you. I want to grow your life and help you have financial freedom and a firm foundation. What would, fi what would your finances and your money say to you if it could speak to you? Well, be thinking about that throughout our time today. And right now, go ahead and take a, a minute to go get a piece of paper and a pencil in order to write down what it is that you think money would say to you, but also so that you can engage in an exercise at the end of our time today to where you can prioritize and figure out what it is that you truly think about your money and what money is saying back to you. So while you go and do that, check out this video. Yes, I love that video because it tangibly demonstrates what it is that we are trying to accomplish during this series. We want to help you build a firm financial foundation so that you can withstand whatever storm comes your way so that you can withstand whatever the enemy has in store for you. We want to help you build your life on a firm foundation and be like that guy who can withstand it and not the other dude whose life is just crumbling and in shambles and his finances are a wreck because he built on a shaky, shallow foundation. We don't want that for you. We want you to build your life on a firm foundation. And one thing that I, I believe you are missing is that you can't hear your money. 
You don't understand how to learn and listen to your money in order to help you build a strong financial future and foundation for your life. If you're anything like me, if you're anything like your neighbor or your roommate, you probably can't hear your money. You probably don't understand what it is that it is communicating back to you. According to these recent surveys, we've seen that 65% of Americans, according to Mint.com, have no idea how much money they spent last month. They have no idea where their money went. According to another article published by CNBC, they report that 75% of Americans are literally winging it when it comes to their financial future. They're just completely winging it. They have no idea what they're doing or where they're sending their money on ahead of them. And lastly, according to Lexington Law, they conducted a small survey of about 3,000 Americans and they found that on average, we would rather talk about politics and religion than we would about money. So what does this communicate to us? This communicates that we have no idea where our money's going. We have no idea what's happening with our money in the future. And we don't even want to talk about it. We have no idea where it went, where it's going, and I don't even want to talk about it. That it shows us that we have a horrible relationship when it comes to our money. So wouldn't it be awesome if we could develop the skills necessary in order to hear our money, in order to learn from our money, how it communicates to us, so that we could build a strong financial foundation that will last us well into the future. That is what we are trying to accomplish in this series. Now, George Washington on this dollar dollar bill, y'all, does not have vocal cords. He cannot talk to me right now. But whenever I spend it, whenever I receive it, whenever I invest it, it is communicating to me. It is showing me what it is that I value, how I, who I value. It shows me who I'm worshiping, what I'm worshiping. It shows me what I'm spending it on and, and why I'm spending it on that. It shows and communicates to me where my heart is going. It communicates to me. And I think one thing that this dollar bill or whatever is in your finances, whatever is in your bank account would say to you is that it's not the most important thing in your life. Your money would say to you that it is not the most important thing in your life. And because of that, we can, we can, we all know that to be true. We all see that in our daily lives. I'm sure you would place family or friendship or, or, a, a, you know, a good uh, job or, or a life filled with purpose, w whatever the case may be. I'm sure you could come up with a laundry list of things that you would prioritize over your money. In fact, go ahead and do that. Type down in the comments what is one thing that is more important to you than your money. For me, it's definitely family. For me, I mean, I grew up in a family where we didn't have that much money, and so it forced us to work together with one another, to build into each other, to fight for one another, to fight with one another, to love one another. Another thing that I would place higher than my finances is my physical health. When Heather and I moved here to New York City, I had been ignoring the pain in my foot for way too long and my plantar fasciata was developing and, and uh, hurting me so much that I literally could not walk our dog to the bathroom and back home without taking a break because my uh, feet were sore, my knees were sore, my hips were sore, my lower back was sore. I was in so much physical pain that it didn't matter how much money it was going to cost me, I needed to solve the, the, the pain that was going on in my feet. And it showed me that money was not the most important thing in my life. Jesus communicates this to us as well. He shows us that money is not the most important thing in our lives. He was talking one day to one, a group of his closest followers and friends. And we see that in Mark chapter 8, verse 36, when he says, And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? What Jesus is talking about is really a hierarchy of priorities. You can literally have everything. You can have uh, the keys to the kingdom. You can have a wonderful view of New York City, one of the most expensive places to live. You can, in fact, 
own all of New York City. But if you don't have a right relationship with God, your Heavenly Father, a spiritual relationship with your with God, then it doesn't matter. None of it matters. You can gain everything the world has to offer but yet lose your own soul. And so Jesus is showing us that there is a hierarchy of priorities that should be in place in your life. And in order to properly uh, manage your money and make your money work for you, you need to properly prioritize your finances. And you can do that by going through the five capitals. And a capital is anything that is within your possession that you can then use to invest in something else. So you can do that with your finances. You and I have financial capital. We can take this dollar and grow it and make many more dollars for ourselves and invest that and in, and in, in, uh, grow our financial capital. We can also grow our intellectual capital. You can go to college. You can read books. You can listen to podcasts. You can grow your intellectual capital capital. You can also grow your physical capital. You have a body that is functioning to some degree and you can uh, do certain things, eat certain things, uh, ingest certain things that can help you grow your physical capital. Uh, uh, fourthly, you can also grow your relational capital. You and I have time and energy where we can invest it into relationships with other people the where we can grow our relationship with them. And fifthly, and what Jesus would say is the most important capital in your life is your spiritual capital, your spiritual capital. Or I don't know where you are in your relationship with God. I don't know what your thoughts are on the church or the Bible or Jesus, but can we all just agree that there is a thing called spiritual capital? And it looks like whenever you love someone else unconditionally, it looks like whenever you encourage one another or serve one another or uh, you know help one another grow in their own personal life. And it's not necessarily a direct benefit for you. It looks like uh, what P uh, Paul says in Galatians chapter five, verse 22 and 23 of the fruits of the spirit, where it looks like love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And against uh, these, there is no law against them. And so Jesus structured his life this way. He structured his life according to the five capitals. And you can do the same. He had financial capital for like 20 years of his life. He was working a normal job as a carpenter, building things, acquiring wealth, and then was able to invest that wealth into his ministry, a three year long ministry where he was able to fund that, also receive assistance and funding from others, but get to get everything started, Jesus built up financial capital in order to invest in intellectual capital where he grew and gained knowledge. He uh, Luke 2 says that Jesus grew in stature and in wisdom. So he grew his physical and intellectual capital in order to pour it into the relationships around him. He spent three years of his life purposely building into 12 guys who would then take the message of Jesus to the rest of the world and change the world. And we are still experiencing the ripple effects of what Jesus has done and how he built into 12 different individuals and so many others than just those 12, where they were able to go and just change the world because Jesus used his capital relationally and invested that into them. Most importantly, though, Jesus invested in his spiritual capital. Time after time, we see Jesus going off off on his own to pray and to, to think and to uh, meditate with God in order to draw closer to him, God, his heavenly father, so that God could pour into him and then he could turn back and pour into all of us to collectively and where he could use his spiritual capital and invest it into the 12 disciples, the 72, the, the majority of people. He was physically present and healing people and touching them and helping them. He was using his intellectual capital and allowing his spiritual capital to fuel that as he was teaching and helping others, uh, you know, experience the kingdom of God in their life. And Jesus was 
building his life on these five capitals. And you and I can do the very same thing where we can intentionally build our lives on these five capitals. But it starts with having a proper position with our finances down at the bottom where money would say, I am not the most important, but I'm still on the list because I'm kind of a big deal. I am still on the list because I am kind of a big deal. I mean, Jesus talks about money all the time. Like 28% of his parables were had to deal with finances. And so Jesus understood that our money is so important in our lives and it can grow and, and change. And if you are placing your finances anywhere else than at the bottom and having a proper position for your money, it will eventually try to consume you and control you and take over your life. That's why Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21, he says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus is showing us that our finances are, are really shaky is a shaky foundation that moth can come rust can come thieves can break in and steal things can happen the housing bubble can burst the stock market can tank you can get a bad diagnosis that will just wipe out all of your finances because you can't afford the medical bills jesus is saying that building your life on the shaky foundation of just acquiring wealth and finances really isn't how you should live your life. Instead, you should use your finances in order to fuel every other area of your life. And that's exactly how Jesus lived his life and then invested all of his capitals into the people around him in order to help them, help heal them, in order to save them and seek after them, in order to grow them and bring them into a relationship with God, their heavenly father. And so Jesus is saying that you have a choice today. If you place your finances improperly, then it reveals where your heart is. If you place your finances properly and prioritize your finances properly, then that also reveals your heart. So the question is, where is your heart today? Where is your heart today? What are you building your life on? Are you like that guy who's building on the rock? Or are you like the guy who's building on sand and it's a shaky foundation that won't last when storms come your way? So we've heard that money is not the most important thing in our life. We've also heard money talk about how it is a big deal and it is very important. But money also has one other thing to say to you today. Money says, I can fuel growth in every area of your life. I can fuel growth in every area of your life. If you properly prioritize your money, and place it in the proper position in your life, then you can properly manage it and it should fuel growth in every single other area of your life. You can use your finances to help grow your intellect. You can use your finances to help grow you relationally and physically. You can even use your finances in order to grow you spiritually and you can invest that into each and every area of your life. So how do you do that? How do you actually use your finances in order to grow yourself spiritually, which Jesus would say is the very most important thing in your life? Well, first off, you cannot be a slave to your money by being a generous giver. Be a generous giver. It, Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, verse 30, 33 and 34, to sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. When you give your money away, you are actually sending it on ahead of you and investing into your spiritual future. So be a generous giver today and don't be a slave to your money, but instead have an open-handed policy and give it away because you are investing in a spiritual future that will never run out, that is completely unlimited, that no thief can break in and steal. 
Secondly, you can also be a sacrificial servant. You can serve others sacrificially with your finances. Paul puts it this way in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 and following. As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. If you want to have a freer, fuller, more abundant life, then you need to serve others around you. You need to sacrificially serve those around you. And what does Paul say? If you do that, you are storing up treasure for yourself and laying a good foundation for your future. Man, who doesn't want that? I mean, being a sacrificial servant will pay off tenfold in your future, especially spiritually. Lastly, in order to use your financial capital, in order to grow your spiritual capital or really any other capital in your life, you need to be like Jesus and invest everything into your spiritual capital. You need to invest your uh, financial, uh, intellectual, physical, uh, relational capital, invest all of that into your spiritual capital in order to grow yourself in order to secure this firm foundation for yourself in this eternal reward that is waiting for you that Jesus went on ahead of you to establish. He said, Paul says again in Colossians chapter 2 verse 14, that by canceling the record of death, that's that of the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. Jesus had financial, physical, relational, intellectual capital, and he invested all of that into his spiritual capital in order to pay off the debt that you and I could never pay. Jesus went all in on his spiritual capital so that he could rescue you, he could restore you and bring you back into a relationship, a right relationship with God, your heavenly father, which is the most important thing in your life. And your money would even validate that and say that of itself, that your spiritual capital is the most important thing in your life. And Jesus paid off your spiritual debt so that you could live a freer, fuller life that is only found in him. He invested every capital within his possession in order to rescue you and restore you back into a relationship with your heavenly father. So what is your relationship with your finances today? Where is your heart? Who is it that has control over your life? I hope you have a piece of paper and a pencil. I hope you grab that because now we're going to use that in order to figure out where it is, honestly, where we place our finances, where our heart is, and who really has control over our life. Go ahead and fill out the sheet of paper just like you see on the screen right now in front of you where you have the spiritual capital at the very top followed by relational, physical, intellectual, and then financial. Now, finance, finances is at the very bottom. That's where the Bible says we should have it. That's where money says it should be. It's not the most important, but it is really important. And so on the column two, go ahead and label which area of your life you're growing signified by an upward facing arrow where you're growing and you're investing a lot in this capital where it's growing in your life. Or with a downward facing arrow, that signifies that there's a deficit. Man, you know, COVID has been really difficult. Quarantine and lockdown has been really difficult. I feel like I'm really in a deficit relationally. So go ahead and put an arrow facing downward. Or maybe that's not the case. Maybe you just feel like you're holding your own and that you're neutral. Go ahead and put that sideways arrow. And then in the final column, answer this question. What is one thing that I can do in order to change for the better? Think about that. Prayerfully consider that. And as you're thinking about that, I'm going to go ahead and pray for you so that the Holy Spirit can help fuel growth in your life today.
Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the person that is watching this right now. And I thank you for the fact that you love them so much that you willingly invested all of your capital into their life. Jesus, we thank you for that. We praise you for your sacrifice and for your generosity, for fueling growth in our lives and making that possible. Jesus, help us. Holy Spirit, guide us as we wrestle with these five capitals in our life and understand where it is that we are placing money. God, help us to not allow it to have our heart. Help us to not allow it to be so high up on the list that it's consuming us, but instead, Help us to be consumed by you. Help us to give our hearts to you. Help us to allow you to have control and leadership of our lives today. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.